Everybody has fun. I wanted to discuss a couple things that Streamlabs OBS has added to the latest version of Streamlabs OBS version 12. Version 12 came out about a week ago and it's given you a couple of nice little features now that I want to discuss. So stay tuned. All right, the first thing that we're going to talk about they added with Streamlabs OBS version 12, and most importantly, I think, is the new NVENC encoding optimizations and quality improvements. So if you don't know about that, that is uh, the new NVENC, or if you want to say NVENC, or however you want to pronounce it, uh, they came out with an SDK 9.0 here a couple months back. And now you are seeing uh, Streamlabs OBS Studio uh, and XSplit incorporate these new optimizations and quality improvements into their software. Uh, Streamlabs OBS came out with version 12. They've been testing it for a while now. So the new event gives you some more quality improvements if you're running the right cards. So if you're running the GTX 16 XX series of so the 1660, the 1660 Ti, soon the 1650 that'll be out next month, or any of the RTX cards, you can run these quality improvements. Now for the efficiency improvements, that is pretty much any NVENC card. Uh, previous videos, I've discussed what that does. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'll provide a link to one of the videos down in the description. But in any case, pretty much every NVENC card, uh, NVENC capable GPU takes advantage of the new changes. And now you can uh, have that in Streamlabs OBS. And it's important because the efficiency improvements will help you a lot if you're struggling uh, with uh, CPU usage because it will actually reduce your CPU usage significantly. Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and show you what that is now. So let's go ahead and go to settings. We will go to output and we're gonna look at streaming. Okay, and this is kind of, you know, the most important part of this. Uh, so now we have this hardware NVENC new. We also have regular NVENC. Now, if you have uh, if you have a GTX 10 series card or any of the older NVIDIA cards, uh, this will be what you will use. But the new NVENC applies to the new GTX cards that have recently come out and the RTX cards. So when you select this, you're going to get a couple options now. Uh, you're in preset. They've now added max quality. Okay, max quality. Uh, is going to give you that quality improvement that we were talking about. Uh, they've also added a couple different options here. So we have look ahead and we have psycho visual tuning. Now look ahead takes and it uses uh, a, kind of like if you think about variable bit rate here, they're using B frames. Okay, so there, it's going to use a variable amount of B frames up to four maximum uh, to depend used to process your video or your streaming code, whatever uh, you're going to be recording, you're going to be uh, streaming. And what that'll do is it'll decide how many B frames it needs uh, to do that encoding. The problem with this one is though, is that if you're playing a fast paced video game, like a shooter, say Apex Legends, for instance, it could hurt the quality of your video and it could end up uh, causing, uh, you know, grains uh, and pixelation stuff that you're uh, used to seeing with lower quality video so do not use look ahead for high you know fast moving video games like apex legends battlefield whatever shooters i uh, only use this if you're going to be playing a game that uh you know is kind of slow and doesn't change a lot all right so the next thing that we're going to discuss is psycho visual tuning now uh, nvidia recommends that you check this and they say that it enables the rate distortion optimization in the encoder, which greatly greatly optimizes the way bit rate is used. And they say it'll over it'll improve the image quality on movement, especially. So this is important to minimize the pixelation of those fast moving games that you play, like uh, of course, like I said it before, Apex Legends. Okay. So you got that. They also recommend you run high profile max quality. And they said B frames, they recommend you go no more than two normally. They said if you have a low, slow paced game, and they referred to Tomb Raider, 
They said you can increase it up to four, which is the max. Uh, but for streaming, they said that if you still notice pixelation, that you might want to reduce it. I've reduced mine down to one. Okay, because they B frames, uh, they do improve image quality, but they also suck up a lot of bit rate. And w when you're having these fast moving games, it could have that effect of having pixelation while you're moving around. So I have dropped the B frames for streaming. Now recording is a little different. Okay, for recording, uh, and we'll talk about this here in just a second. Maybe you might have noticed that little addition right there. But uh, so for recording, they recommend you set a CQP or CQ level of, I've got 14 here. They say 15. Um, I was use, I've been using 17 for my uh, recordings, but they recommend you do 15 with a max quality preset, high profile. And the difference here is they recommend you check both look ahead and psycho visual tuning uh, because you're going to be using a lot more bit rate uh, with a CQ level of 15. Uh, of course, the same rule applies with the B frames. Uh, the max B frames, of course, is four. They recommend you use two. Okay, and for slower moving games, you can increase it to four. All right, the next thing that we will talk about is if if, if you didn't notice before, audio tracks. We now have multi track recording in OBS in Streamlabs OBS here. So I've got four tracks selected here that you can. Uh, send uh, audio to and then you can go to your advanced audio properties and here you have all the tracks that you can send this uh, source to uh, so if you want this one to go to just four you make sure you uncheck all of these if you want Mike aux to go to just one you make sure you uncheck all of these uh, music if you want it to just go to three you uncheck all these. And then when you record anything with these sources, these will show up on independent audio tracks inside of your editing software. So say for instance, you have comms, which is here's the most valid reason for doing this. Uh, your own comms with a bunch of your friends and you're playing games. And sometimes people like to don't you know say things on comms that you don't really want to put in your video, okay? So you can use this multi-track audio function to record your comms separately from your gameplay audio so that you can edit out, edit out those little things that people say that you don't want on your video without messing up the whole sequence of uh, discussion and, you know, and messing, ruining your timeline for your gameplay and all that stuff, uh, which is really nice. And that's probably the most valid uh, thing that I could say for if you're playing music, you know, you have it separately. You can control volume level separately from your gameplay so that your gameplay audio stays at one level. Uh, you can lower your music level so that your music's not overpowering your gameplay audio. That's another, uh, you know, functionality of it too, which is really nice. So, anyway, multi track is something that a lot of people have been waiting on for a long time. All right, so the third thing I want to show you real quick is. Uh, and it's not really nothing to really show, but they have updated the new tech uh, NDI source to support the 3.8 uh, NDI runtimes. Okay, so the plugin now is 4.5.3, and it supports those 3.8 runtimes, which you will have to update if you are uh, going to use NDI. Okay, so if you're running the 3.5 runtimes, and you update your uh, Streamlabs OBS to version 12, your NDI source is not going to show up in your source list. So you make sure you update to the 3.8. So the last thing I want to talk about now is to talk about VLC plugin. They added the VLC plugin. What you'll need to do is you'll need to download the latest version of VLC. I'll provide that down in the description. Uh, VLC is probably the... Uh, Best video player you're going to find on the internet. It plays pretty much anything you can imagine. It even streams video. It plays multi-track audio. And it's free. You can't beat it. Uh, so they have given you a VLC plugin now. Now, so you, you have to get the latest version of this before this will show up. But once you uh, have it installed, then you will get a VLC source listed in the sources here. And you can go in and you can add the source. And when you add the source... Uh, you can go and you can choose one of two options. You can choose a file, 
video file or you can choose a directory of videos. So I have a, uh, say for instance, I go and I select my, uh, I have a videos folder and let's see, I have a, let's choose, okay, I'll choose a rendered video. Uh, this is my rendered video. So this is all of my TFS uh, tutorials that I have uh, still on this folder or inside this folder. And so let me sh shut that down. So this video will then play whenever you bring this uh, scene up and you can resize it, do whatever you need to do. Okay. Uh, you can add it to another scene if you want. And I could go here and go VLC source, add VLC source. I can add existing and then you could put it in something like a camera frame like this right here, for instance. and move that down so it's behind the frame itself. And there you have a video inside of a frame that you can do. Uh, of course, you see that the uh, it has audio. You can also see that it uses a right fair amount of CPU. So that's something you need to be uh, mindful of when you're using this. But uh, that's really neat. Uh, there is a couple more options that you can do with this. Uh, you can loop it. Um, you can shuffle the playlist if you want. Um, you can have a couple options here where you don't, you can stop when not visible, restart when visible. You can pause when not visible, unpause when visible, or you could just have it always playing. So it's a really nice option to have with VLC. And it's a good way to show off videos that you've done. Okay, gameplay, that sort of thing that you can use for your intermission or whatnot. So some really nice things that Streamlabs has added to Streamlabs OBS. Uh, NVENC and the multi-track audio are game changers. It's a... Uh, great thing the new invink is unbelievable i recommend you go out if you're looking at getting a gtx 16 series card or the rtx series cards with the turing processors it takes advantage of this new invink uh try it out uh, especially if you're you know if you have a pc that can stream at 720p 60 but really can't push it to 1080p 60 uh and you're looking to get into that next level uh consider the new gtx series cards or the the uh rtx that has these turing processors because now every major streaming platform including streamlabs obs now supports it and it really does increase the quality compared to older uh in invink and i love it i absolutely love it been using the uh 1660 ti now for a little over a week i've tested it with rtx 2060 um, and it just looks incredible compared to what you used to see with invink so go out there and try it out. Uh, the version 12 is really nice. And even if you have an older Invink card, uh, it still has optimizations there that decreases the CPU load. So if you're uh, struggling with uh, CPU load with Streamlabs OBS, then try Invink and see if that helps you out too. And the VLC is just another nice option that can give you another level of professionalism and another level of entertainment for your viewers. So thank you guys for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Thanks for your support, especially on streaming on YouTube this week. Uh, make sure if you're interested in checking my normal streams out, keep a lookout on my YouTube page also check me out on twitch.tv forward slash tfs underscore punisher and you can also find me on twitter at tfs underscore punisher and for the new side of tfs at frugal underscore streamer so guys thank you again for your support i will see you later have a great weekend be safe out there bye bye